Hey CrossCart fans, uh, I wasn't going to post this video and I'm not going to do a complete video on it because I've already shown how to extend a wiring harness. So today I'm just going to give you some pointers on converting a street bike engine wiring harness to a buggy. There's some things I found that might be helpful, so I'm just going to give you kind of tips and tricks on it, not really a full uh, overview of it. So our biggest limiting factor, as with most things, is going to be our coils. Now the length of these wires kind of dictate where these go, and we're running out of room back here. Uh, there's still plenty, and we've got a lot of components to mount. We have the rectifier, we've got the start solenoid, we've got relay boxes, flasher signals, CDI, and we need to find a nice, neat place back here to put it. Now I was thinking about making a shelf back here, but if I did that, it'd be hard to get the engine in. Um, the front's taken up by the exhaust in my normal sweet spot, I like to put it. So we gotta figure out where to put all this stuff, whether it be a removable mount. Uh, I was considering using these rear, rear motor mounts and making just a plate that bolts to it, but I still might make some motor mounts for these just to put three points of connection on the chassis for this motor. So well, let's get into it. All right, I had this coil bracket from a different build. Um, it basically just holds two coils, one on either side, and the grounding point becomes the mount for this or it comes with an external ground in case you're mounting it to aluminum. Now I'm just gonna put a simple mount right on the center of the harness bar so that it doesn't interfere with our harnesses or our harness and uh, we can still get the engine in and out. So it'll kind of mount vertically like that and it'll come off here. The only problem is that this piece is angled. So a little hot tip is if you're mounting something at an angle to round bar, uh, it's still gonna be cut to an arc with a hole saw, but you just use a bigger hole saw and you can just clock it. So this is inch and a quarter for the harness bar. I cut an inch and a half hole saw cut and it goes on there and then when you twist it it tightens up and that will get this angle perfect for our our coils and there you have it here's a little tab we made uh, here's the bracket uh, we could have made a custom bracket and made this look a little slicker but it's functional and hopefully it's going to be hidden by by bodywork and stuff. This is all the engine area, so having an engine component like that isn't going to make this uh, look terrible, <laughs> hopefully. All right, so the first gotcha is that this harness is made to run down the right side of the bike, uh, and I like to run my harness down the left side because of the shift linkage and the brake lines just to keep them separated. So first thing I'm gonna have to do uh, just like the last one, is extend the TPS wire to just get this reset to go up the left side instead of the right. All right, so we're getting to where we can figure out what the basic layout's going to be. Uh, there's a few wires heading from the generator alternator. Uh, there's an oil level sensor and a neutral start switch sensor, which we are going to retain the neutral start switch, which is just one wire. Uh, this sensor inside here completes a circuit when it's in neutral and the oil level sensor is kind of optional but it's the other wire on this harness um, but laying it out we've got the the thermostat the sub harness comes off of here and goes to the thermostat and eventually to the fan so that's routed in the right direction tps is going in the right direction um, from down here, we can kind of figure out where we're going to mount the CDI or ECU, whatever you want to call it. I think down here is going to be fine. We're going to put bodywork here so it'll be protected. And then the rectifier regulator can go back here somewhere. Now we want to get airflow to it. Um, we can use kind of a Venturi effect um, to, to get airflow coming back towards it instead of from the front. Or we can put in a little duct if it gets too hot. Um, this stuff all goes to the coil, it's coming off of here, so we'll be able to route that vertically and head that to the, the coil. 
we're gonna have to split off the right handlebar switch, which is the start stop, lights, uh, starter switch, momentary switch, all that. Um, but this is looking really good, what's this? Oh yeah, the fan motor. Uh, the fan motor, we'll get to that, but basically there's a switch on the thermostat, just one wire, and when it reaches a certain temperature, it completes that circuit, and that's run off the positive side of this. So some things it'll complete the negative or the ground to start a motor and some will connect the positive. And then the rest of the harness is already heading forward. Uh, I got the gauge cluster. Um, the headlight harness comes off of this. So you can put headlights and blinkers on a factory harness if you want. And then the left handlebar switch and the main ignition switch. Uh, got starter, starter relay. Um, it's on a harness, so we could wrap it back up around here if we wanted to. Fuse boxes and relays. It doesn't look like this is going to be too much of a hassle once I figured out and labeled everything on it. Uh, the last big thing is we're going to have to come up with the chassis ground. We are well on our way. So now I'm just going to start extending the harness, and I'm not going to show that in the video. Uh, check out the KTM wiring if you want to see how to extend a harness. Um, Sorry, no tripod, I'm just gonna handhold this. This is the ignition switch for the Yamaha Crotch Rocket. Uh, it's got three positions. One is the fork lock, and this thing is solid metal. It's heavy, it's gonna be really hard to mount behind the dash. Uh, it's a four pin. So what I did was I just got on Amazon, got a four pin nice key that will mount easily to the dash. Now, what I did was I checked the wiring, uh, this, is four pins, but it doesn't mean that everything is energized all at once. Uh, it's two different circuits. Uh, this is the positive terminal, and this side grounds your your uh, coils. So these have to be separated. It's two different ones. So if you get an aftermarket switch like this one, make sure it's got two different sets. I pulled this apart to verify it, but when the key's on, these two connect. And these two connect on a separate circuit. So now I'm just gonna cut the pigtails and wire it up for my application. All right, so let's go ahead and function check our wiring. Uh, I got the dash hooked up even though I'm not gonna use it. Um, it'll let me know if I have continuity to all the gauge panels and that the wiring harness is extended and run correctly. So first step, turn on the battery, nothing happens. Secondly, turn on the key. Boom. We've got warning lights. 
Uh, we've got an error code coming into our speedometer. Uh, that's just for the oil level low light. Our fuel pump kicked on, so the relays are working. Let's check the, uh, the battery continuity if we turn the battery off. It cuts power to the system, which is what you want. You don't want it to be just the key, so. Main power switch on, key on, lights on, key off, lights off. Main power switch off, lights off. The fuel pump is loud because there's no fluid running through it. It's just running air. And I'm not gonna do this too much because I don't want to cause problems to that pump, even though they're cheap. So let's check our neutral light. Let's put it in gear. All right, now we should not be able to start it in gear. Nothing, right? But we have a neutral override switch, so we don't have to find neutral to start it every time. We can flip that up and we'll check that, which this represents the clutch. So flipping this switch is sending the signal that the clutch is in. So we'll try to start it. Good. The engine tried to turn over, the fuel pump kicked on. That's very good. So let's turn that off, put it back in neutral, and then it should just start with this switch down. There we go. So our wiring is done correctly. Uh, we can start tidying up this mess and uh, we can start hooking up our gauge lights. All right, the harness is almost done. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is extend the gauge cluster harness for the indicator lights on our panel. Now, the Trail Tech comes with four lights and they're incandescent or LED, whichever your bike is set up for. I'm gonna use the incandescent because that's what this bike came with. And it's got its own sub harness, which makes it really nice for us because all we need to do is take the back half of that, extend those wires to the pre-measured amount, and then we can just plug the indicator lights along with all the other dash components. So I'm not going to show you that, just showing you what I'm doing. All right, cross cart fans, this is about as far as I'm going to go with it until I get it running. Uh, I didn't wrap the coil leads. Um, you can see I extended the harness for the thermostat, the starter, all the alternator stuff. I got the first part wrapped. This is never pretty, but it's going to be covered and it's going to be secured in there with zip ties or wire hangers. It's running right up the left side like I like it too. Uh, this is for the brake sensor. I got to run it up to one of the front master cylinders. It's not hooked up yet. And then I stopped wrapping it here, but all of this is just gonna get wrapped and tucked behind the dash in all this space up here. It kind of makes it nice. You don't have to have wires that are the exact length and it's still nice and tucked and pretty. Here's how the dash turned out. So we've got our master switch. It just connects to battery, doesn't turn on anything. And then the key, there's our nice pretty dash. There you go. Why well, that didn't light up. There it goes. We've got our neutral light. We've got our no oil light. Uh, I haven't hooked up the lights yet. I didn't know what to do with the force, so I just put the turn signal. I left the relay hooked up and everything still works. Neutral. Not in neutral. Pretty cool. Well, cross car fans, that's it for this video. The wiring harness is 90% complete. I'm gonna make sure it's running, check all the circuits, check everything before I wrap the rest of it, just to make sure everything's good. Um, but to get it running, I gotta get fuel lines, coolant lines, and hook that stuff up. I was hoping to get it running today and I ran into that. Dog on it. So uh, some of the special things I had to do for a motorcycle engine was the kickstand switch. Most bikes have it. You just close that circuit so that it reads the kickstand being up. Also the uh, run stop switch. I just hardwired that as a closed circuit. It'll be like a red wire with a black stripe and then Hardwire to a red wire with white stripe for Yamaha. I think most of them are like that. Most of the ones I've run into. So it's key only. Um, we do still have two safety switches. We have the key 
and we have the main power switch. The main power switch will cut power to everything, including the coils, which will kill the engine. Same with the key, so we don't need this to run stop switch. Everything's working really well. The lights turn out really great. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a break from electrical, at least until I get those, those parts in, and I'm gonna start working on some of the body work. So stay tuned for the next one, and as always, thank you very much for watching.